Welcome to Caldwell County Today. I'm Paige Counts, Public Information Officer for Caldwell County. Joining me today is Keith Smith, and Keith is here to talk about Madam Buttermilk, your upcoming mm -hmm. performance, and some special activities going on around that. Yes, uh, this play was written by a gentleman named Ross Carter, very talented man, fairly prolific as a playwright. He's written several plays and writes music for them, does a great job, and he's been a director and a consultant with many theater companies through the years. He lives in Louisville, Kentucky. And when he wrote this show, it won a prize and he got to present it at Barter Theater and then they adapted it some more and represented it and then COVID came along. And now it's available for public consumption. There are a few theaters doing it, but we're the only one around here who has done it or who will be doing it. And uh, it's very special to me and to our group. Ross is a very kind, accessible man and uh, he is actually going to come in to a couple of the rehearsals and then to a couple of the performances, which is no small feat because he's coming from Louisville, Kentucky, which I looked up as 430 miles from Hudson, 430 and some tenths miles <laughs> from Hudson. So we appreciate him coming in. But he'll be here from this taping on Monday, uh, March, 30, March 13th, which is coming up very quickly. It's a Monday, March 13th at 5.30, and he'll watch the rehearsal that night, but he and I are going to have a, a sit-down discussion, intimate, informal discussion with anybody who wants to procure a ticket for that evening for him to talk about playwriting in general and how he specifically came up with ideas for this show. And I have some input on that as well. And we'll talk about theater in general. And then uh, we'll entertain questions from anybody who's there. It's limited to the first 64 people. It's in the little room down the hall from the Hub Auditorium right beside the elevator. And it starts at 5.30, and with your $20 ticket, uh, you get uh, a beverage of your choice from three doors down. It does not have to be alcoholic. You can get whatever you want to drink. And then the discussion will continue, and people can stay there. Then we have to go to rehearsal at 7, so we'll be with everybody for an hour and a half. But the main thing is that the money, any proceeds we make from this go back into the theater. We're always trying to find ways to raise money for dinner theater because it's, a, it's an expensive endeavor. So this, this will help that, and Ross is gracious and kind enough to do it. And I, people have asked me over the years when we've done shows, well, how'd you choose this show? How'd you choose the actors? Uh, what's the process? What's auditioning like? We'll address all of that. So if, if you want an inside glimpse, especially people who have been coming to shows for years, or you can be brand new to our shows, but if you've been coming for a while and you've been, been asking those questions, this, this will give people an inside glimpse. Keith, is this the first opportunity you've had to do something like this? I've done it before, but not really at the Hub. You know, Jan Karen, who right. wrote the books, which Bob Inman's uh, Welcome to Mitford play were based on. You know, I've worked with both of them before. We've not had a sit-down thing like this where she discusses and I discuss with the public, nor Bob and I, both very accessible, very kind people. Jan's more from behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. um, Bob is out there too as a great playwright, but Ross has been just very, um, very good about wanting to do anything he can to promote the show. He loves his show and wants to promote it. And he's very, very down to earth. Um, and some of the people in the show, they're just great for their characters. We'll talk a little bit about that. We're going to come down in a week or so and interview them with mm -hmm. from this taping with Eric comes down, so kind to come down to the theater and you get to meet the cast. But everybody that's been involved in this show I appreciate the humility because we have a lot of talent and everybody's very accessible, very cordial, work well with each other. And we've really developed a family at the Hub, but, but Ross is becoming a part of that. He told me we load in. That means we take everything where it's being built across the, the way in the Hub and bring it into the auditorium this coming Sunday the 12th. And that's the day Ross is coming out. He's already said, I'll help you load in. So he's going to roll up his sleeves. He said, I'll do anything but paint. He says, I'm not a good painter. Wow, that that's huge it's because great. I've seen your sets and they can't be light to move to load in. No, it's a heavy process. And uh, Ross also was just to hear him what little bit he and I've discussed the specifics of how he got started writing this play. It's very fascinating. I think he and some friends were driving down the road and some double entendre occurred that could go either way. Thought, what if country music met with operatic music? And that's the premise for how it got started. But these songs are, are grade A songs that he's written, and they quote opera. But anybody who's not an opera fan, 
You will love this show. You will embrace it because it's not a lot of opera. It just quotes some opera, and you'll recognize some of the themes from opera. But it ties in with these wonderful country songs that, that Ross has also written. And after his first rendition of it at Barter, he went, went in and uh, met with Mark Hayes, who's a great arranger, composer himself. Most people in the Baptist Church will know him really well. I was trying to say, that name is very yeah. familiar. And he helped arrange these songs. I mean, they're, they're classy songs. They're not, they're not buttermilk. They're not uh, bubblegum. They have some substance to them. But the thing I say, and Ross does this so well, and I talk about it in my notes in the program, um, I've always been intimidated, as I think most people are, by classical music. Even mm -hmm. though I've been exposed to it and worked with it, I still feel intimidated. I feel intimidated by Shakespeare or great literature. I feel intimidated by the Bible. So we tend as human beings to put those things up on this iconic shelf and how dare we approach them when I think God through the Bible and Shakespeare through his works and composers like Mozart and Bach and Beethoven and at this level, Ross, I think everybody wants you to take down those things and embrace them and study them and learn them and understand them and not keep them at an arm's length. And this play is a great way to do that, the blending of these worlds. It's really very clever, very funny. And I'm telling you, some of you trust me from shows in the past. If you've seen them, you need to see this one. Others, just trust me anyway. Please come <laughs> see this one. It's, we're at this point close to 1,100 ticket sales, still got over 600 left, so we want to sell out every performance, really do. When are the performances for the per perform Our performances are March 23rd, 24th, 25th, March 30th, 31st, and April 1st, and those are Thursday through Fridays, two weekends to end the month of March and the first day of April. And it's dinner theater. And it's dinner theater catered by Daniel Boone Inn, and um, tickets are $37 for the show and dinner, 19 for the show only. And there are three ways you can get tickets for this evening with Ross and me or for the play itself. You can call the Hub Box office and talk to Addie, the wonderful manager director there, 828-726-8871. Uh, or you can actually go by the Hub Box office on, at 145 Cedar Valley Road where you'll see the show and get your tickets. Or the easiest and most convenient way is to go to either the Hub Station or the Town of Hudson website and follow the link to tix.com, that's T-I-X dot C-U-M. It'll give you all the available tickets and let you know. Now this thing on the, on the 13th, the Gathering with Ross and Me, it's limited to the first 64 people. It's in an intimate setting, conversational, uh, and those tickets are general admission. You still need to procure them, but uh, go online or go by there and you get them, then it's first come, first served that evening. That'll be an exciting evening, and it's a good look behind the scenes. It is. This will be let you know what we're thinking and what goes on in the process, and uh, you will learn that there are a lot of people who are very accessible. And uh, I can't say enough about our, our set builders, Joe and Carolyn Eichard, designers, and our costumer, <clears throat> Christy Branch, and Charles Hicks, and Ashley uh, Hicks, Ashley Cos Cosby Hicks, who... Uh, um, do our tech, sound and lights in the booth. And uh, our stage manager is Jane Johncoff, ably assisted by her husband, John. And also Dennis and Brenda Bell are very involved. I'll mention some of the cast members in a minute, but I, um, Jane and John came from California. <clears throat> At about the same time, Charlie Finkel came, who mm -hmm. was the lead you know, in uh, To Kill a Mockingbird and was Uncle Billy in the Mitford place. Delightfully studied uh, theater in, in school and then said he couldn't make a living at it, so he became a lawyer for 45 years, but then came back to theater. And another couple, Jingle Inerio and Mike Dineet, she's from the Philippines. She's done some choreography for us, a wonderful dancer, but they come and help back scenes. All these people are invaluable to us. But the thing is, all three of those couples, uh, Charlie and his wife Linda, I didn't mention her, delightful lady, they all moved here from California within the last three years. So we have our little, California's loss was definitely our gain. But uh, just can't talk about how important the people behind the scenes are. We have funding from the Caldwell Arts Council grassroots program. We have funding every show we do from McCray Modern Furniture. We couldn't do it without those folks. And then in the actual cast itself, and when we have a band, we're still finalizing who's going to play. But it'll be five, five instruments on stage playing. Uh, Sherry January has been with us the whole time on keyboard, and there'll be other people coming in. Bill Warren as a guitarist, fine guitarist, and um, Terry Reed on the bass, and we're working with a couple of other instruments. We, we have options, so that's good. That's a good thing to have. But in the cast itself, 
Catherine um, Lukadu is getting ready to be a, will be a rising uh, senior next year. She's come into the mid for shows and this does anything you ask her backstage, makes small appearances on stage. Marsha Marshall will be the page turner for Sherry, and her husband Robert is one of the car men singing in the car men <laughs> band along with Tracy Love. And then we have Randy McCall who will do anything to help. He's a delight and a godsend. And then there are four main couples. There's the lead couple. They're all leads. It's an ensemble show with almost equal stage time for everybody. But the leads are Tommy Clawson and Alexandria McNeely, or Ally McNeely. Uh, he did shows with me 10 or more years ago. His mother, Stephanie, um, knows a lot of people in this area, sang with a lot of groups, and I think went to high school with Sherry January, maybe. But Tommy um, is a delight. He's very talented. He did shows with me at a young age, went away in the military, and now he's back, and I'm delighted. I can't think of anybody else I'd rather see playing this role. And Allie, I cannot say enough about her. Uh, Allie has her music degree from Lenore Ryan and her Masters of Music concentrating in opera from Eastman School of Music, which is very prestigious Eastern Music School. She's 25 years old. But the thing is, she's not a bit pretentious, but the girl is amazing. She had a concert at the Black Box, which is the little theater at, uh, in Newton Conover, the Green mm -hmm. Room, last Friday, and don't, didn't have many people there. It was $20. It was a delightful concert. She not only sang, she told a story, and it was New York caliber, I'm telling you. People missed it. They need to come see her in this. I think they'll be overwhelmed at how good she is. And she's down to earth. All these people are very humble, and that means a lot. And she and Tommy are working well together. Then there's Kevin Parrish and Holly Dagenhart. <clears throat> Holly's also the choreographer for the show. And she and Kevin play opposite each other. He is a guy named Beamer. Uh, all these have car themes and car nicknames. And then Kit is the roommate and the agent for Carly Speranza, which is the character that, that mm -hmm. Allie plays. And I should have mentioned that Tommy plays Connor Duke, who is how he was known to, to Allie, to Carly when they dated in college. But he's now become one of the leading country stars in the country, but she knows nothing about country music. Mm -hmm. So then Beamer's in the Carmen band, and as I said, Kid is the agent for, for Carly. And then there's the couple of um, Ford Fairlane, played by Adam Lowry, delightfully, and uh, his woman in the show, and she's actually his woman in the mm -hmm. show, in the show is uh, Angie Warren. She mimes everything. She's lost her voice. That's why Carly has to come in to fill in for her singing. So she has to, but she's got great expression. She's going to be delightful. It's going to be so funny. And as I said, her husband Bill is uh, playing in the band. You may not recognize him because he has some physical appearance changes. And then... The uh, other couple, last but certainly not least, is Ken Twing uh, playing Art, and his last name escapes me for the moment, but he plays Art, who is an announcer, mm -hmm. and then the woman with him is the stage manager within the show. Jane's the stage manager of the real show, but within the show, it's Ann Webner. She's the stage manager, um, um, Jan uh, Swafford, I believe. I can't remember these names all of a sudden. That's crazy. I'm getting old, Paige. But um, anyway, they're delightful characters, too. And you're going to see some great song and dance. But it's not, don't let the fact that it has some opera or song and dance. For you. This is a comedy. It's a sheer all-out comedy. The most thing is they come out there, they present, and they do it wonderfully. Jan Swaggart is her name. Still hadn't quite come up with the Kens. I'll think of it. Right. So those are the people involved in the show. Always I'm smart enough to surround myself with good people, and I work them very hard, but we have fun. But I'm pushing them really hard right now, but they're, they're doing great, and I'm very proud of them. And it sounds like there's a lot of good questions out there for Mr. Carter. I mean, talking yes. about inspiration. Sure. And coming up with the double entendres, and yeah. some of these names are quite interesting. They are, and I mentioned to you before, and you don't, some of them are written jokes. I mean, you hear them, but... If you see, like, like Kevin's character says, Audi neighbors, we mentioned that before, mm -hmm. A-U-D-I, Audi neighbors. There's a lot of those little plays back and forth. And there's a, there, they have the pig princess at the fair, and they take off on all these pig names that relate to opera, like Pigliato and Pigaro, Pigaro. So it's, it's just it's fascinating and fun and very clever. <clears throat> and it has some substance. Some of these type 
comedy. I'm sorry about having allergies. Some of these type comedies um, have a little bit of bubble gum to them. They're not always full of substance. Some are, but a lot aren't. This has a lot of substance. It plays really well. So, so right away, get your tickets to meet Mr. Carter, sit down, ask questions. Mm -hmm. A great behind the scenes look at. Yeah, have a drink, relax with us. That's uh, that's this coming Monday from this taping. So, um, you know, we'll it's a quick turnaround, but we didn't realize when we could do it till just now. So, mm -hmm. so that's good. And I also think <clears> it's great that Mr. Carter's going to be back to see some actual performance. He's going to come to the opening night and then one other performance, and um, he. Um, He's also, as I said, going to help, I think I told you earlier, he's going to help with our load in. He's just a very down to earth guy, but uh, he'll be here for that. And then, um, as, as we said, get, get your Monday night tickets right away and then look for getting uh, tickets for the show. But uh, Mr. Carter's also going to come on next Monday, or at, at this time, it's scheduled for that to be with me here during the day mm -hmm. to tape, and then we'll tape the cast and put all that together. So there are a lot of opportunities to go online or to go to your television station or to go to the Hub website and find out more and more about the play. So it, I'm excited about this play. It, so I am too. I really am. I've been wanting to do it since pre-COVID, so we finally get to. And uh, I'm tickled. To, could, couldn't be more pleased with the people we have in the show. Very, very good as actors and singers and very good as people. And they're working on their dance. So. And they're working Holly's on doing them. a great job with them with the <laughs> dance. So. You know, dance may not always be our greatest strength. Holly's strength is that she's she understands that a show should not stop for a dance and then resume. The dance needs to be part of the story, and she's incorporating that very well. It's not. It's there are a couple of official dances. There's mm -hmm. the waltz and the polka. Very little ballet. There's one soft shoe number that Ken Twing does delightfully. Mm -hmm. Art. What's Art's last name? Anyway, <laughs> so. But most of the steps are just people walking and moving. People can do that. Not all these people are dancers, but they can do these clever movements, and it fits in with the show, and I'm very delighted with what she's come up with. And then I get to throw in something, let's try that. Yeah, that's good. So it's, it's fun collaborating mm -hmm. with people. Yeah. And it's awesome that you're going to have the playwright here. Yeah. Oh, and uh, to see the show, to meet people. But again, he's very accessible. Very easy to get along with. People will enjoy meeting him. And, and he does have some very interesting tidbits. He and I have had long conversations on the phone, met a, two or three times in person and talked on the phone quite a bit, but do a lot of email back and forth. And it's obvious he's very clever and, and has a lot, of, a lot of great ideas. Keith, thank you for being here with us It's today. always good, Paige. You're very nice to accommodate me. They stay here until after midnight to let me, it's not after midnight, no. but, it's, but it's after closing, <laughs> so we appreciate it, Paige and Eric. Mm -hmm. We enjoy it, Keith. Thank, thank you. you. And thank you for watching Caldwell County today.